So I'm going to start with question three. Okay, so question three, an icosahedron is a regular shape with 20 triangular faces. The faces are numbered from 1 to 20. If the icosahedron is thrown 10 times, so n is 10, and the probability of a particular face turning up is going to be 1 out of 20, isn't it? Let's keep reading. Calculate the following. The probability that an even number, five, even number five times exactly. So what's the probability, <coughs> if I've got numbers one to 20, the probability of an even number is actually a half, yeah? So the probability is a half. That's for any particular um, number coming up. Alrighty. Um, an even number five times exactly. So we're looking at the probability of x equals exactly five times, where the number of trials is ten, and the probability is a half. So distribution, binomial distribution, BPD, because it's not cumulative, and variable and x is 5 and the number of trials is 10 and the probability is 1 half. Execute and I get 0.2461. So I check that is correct in the back of the box. Okay, next one. So we're going to go to uh, question 2b. The probability of getting at least four even numbers. So we've got the probability that x is greater than equal to four, where the probability of an even number is a half, and the number of trials is 20. So we have to rewrite this as 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to something. And so we need to think in regards of 4 that way, how do we get this? The opposite, so we actually need to have less than or equal to 3. It's important to note it's discrete data. Does that make sense? So we're going this time distribution binomial distribution BCD. So BCD always goes probability less than or equal to something. So X is 3. Helps. Terrible. Yeah. X becomes 3. The number of trials is still 10 and the probability is still that. So it equals 1 minus 0 0.171875 then we need to go to menu we need to go here and we need to go 1 minus 0.171875 so we've got 0 0.8281 okay I'm just going to take that one <laughs> got it right. So for that particular problem, this is the binomial distribution. Yeah. So if I, um, I can liken this to what happens in my calculator, okay? So if I put my calculator here and I go exit, whoops, menu, if I go um, to stats and then to distribution and then to binomial, if I go BPD, so uh, x equals zero, for example, number of trials, 10, probability 0.5, then that's that tiny, tiny number there. If I go one, then that's this tiny number here. If I go two, I'm getting the probability here. So that's 0.1, so this is gonna be somewhere between um, zero and 0.1, okay? So that's correct. If I was to go 5, uh, x being 5, 
I get that maximum probability, which is 0.246. So here's the 0.2, that's 2.46. So do you understand what's going on there? What's happening in your calculator? So the other button distribution, binomial distribution BCD, gives you this, and I want to um, show it to you. Uh, if I go here, oops, function print screen, go into paint and control V. I've got this to actually play with now, right? So if I say, oops, am I actually here? Yes. If I say the probability of X being, what was that? I'm just going to say less than or equal to 4, okay? Then that's the same as this probability in here plus this probability plus this probability plus these two, but I can't fill them in. Does that make sense? So that's saying the probability of um, x being less than or equal to 4 is this plus this plus this plus this plus this. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. All right? Because the 4 is here. The probability of x being less than 4 would only be that one and that one and those. Does that make sense? it's got to be less than 4, so it can't be equal to 4. Yep, there's a nod. Okay, so if I was to say, like that one that we just did, whoops, rectangular selection, yeah, I'll get rid of that. So that one we just did is something like, um, find the probability of x being greater than 5. So what we're trying to find is the greater than 5. So we're trying to find this. But our calculator only has the option of probability of x being less than or equal to something. And the area underneath always adds to 1. Total probability adds to 1. So the question is, if we're looking at the probability greater than 5, which is this black bit, what do we put into our calculator where it's 1 minus? So the bit we want in our calculator is going to be that plus that plus that plus that plus these tiny ones. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So what am I going to put here? Um, hang on. I've written that incorrectly there, haven't I? I'll just grab that. So what I'm actually trying to put here is the probability that x is greater than 5 equals 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to something. Okay? So the probability of x being greater than 5 is at x being 6, x being 7, x being 8. This area here is what? The whole lot is 1. So trying to find x is greater than 5 has got to be 1 minus x is less than or equal to What's that orange shaded area? Five. Okay. Now if I made that go like this and that go like this, the area would now include the five. So what would happen to this number? Oops. What would it be? If it was greater than or equal to 5, it would be 1 minus 4. four. Make sense? So let's see if I, we, can, um, we can do that and get it right. So if I had the probability of x being greater than 2, 
the probability of x being greater than or equal to 1, the probability of x being greater than 7. That would equal 1 minus probability, oops, probability of x being less than or equal to what? Greater than 2 is going to be 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's got to be... How do you know how long that goes for? doesn't matter, does it? Actually doesn't matter because we're looking at the... Great, so if that's 2, then we're looking at anything above 2, greater than 2. So we're looking at not 2 but more than 2. So to get the flip side whatever this is, what do we need to ha do? We need to get these guys in. So what does our number have to be? Two. Two, correct. So this next one, because our calculator won't do the greater than, our calculator will only do the less than or equal to, what number do we need to do here? Greater than equal to 1. So it needs to be less than or equal to... This makes all the difference, whether the equal sign is there or not. You need a diagram. So you've got the one, two, three, four, up that way. So we're looking for greater than or equal to one, so whatever all of that is. All right? But what's here? Zero. So what do we do here? Zero. It's almost tricky, isn't it? Because less than or equal to zero would give you the same thing is 1 minus the probability of x equaling 0. Okay, so what about um, if we do that one again, oh, here, and if I went, what's the probability of x being greater than or equal to 7 equals 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to Beautiful. And so this last one, what's that one? Oops, sorry. Equals 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 7. I think you're going to have to draw a diagram. Yeah. yeah. So if you go back and think of that, does that help? Maybe? So, yeah. Draw yourself a diagram. I think that's good.